Thank you for joining us for the first edition of our new Downtown Now webinar series. After the panel discussion, we will have a Q&A session. Throughout the webinar, you are welcome to submit questions using the Q&A button on the menu bar. This way, we will have questions lined up and ready to go to start the Q&A. I will now turn it over to our president and CEO, Joe Marinucci. Thanks, Audrey, and, and good afternoon, everybody, and thank you so much for joining us today. Um, uh, as many of you know, Downtown Cleveland Alliance is the nonprofit entity that represents uh, property owners, businesses, both large and small, stakeholders, uh, and civic partners uh, in downtown Cleveland. We're the group that over the last 15 years has concentrated uh, holistically on downtown um, and looked to create a, a very pedestrian friendly environment um, for people to live, work, and play in. Um, and through uh, creating that environment to attract additional investment into downtown Cleveland. Um, we're pleased today to uh, welcome media sponsors, Cleveland Magazine and Community Leader, uh, as well as our neighborhood-based partners, um, Historic Warehouse District, Historic Gateway, Playhouse Square, uh, and the Flats uh, in uh, preparing for uh, this first uh, uh, Downtown Now uh, weekly series. Since 2018, Downtown Cleveland Alliance's Downtown Now Spotlight and Community Leader, a quarterly publication by Cleveland Magazine, has highlighted the voices and progress of our downtown community. Now, as we navigate some very uh, clear challenges um, for our neighborhood and for the community as a whole, uh, as we continue to make downtown clean and safe, and just to digress for a moment to let you know that our uh, safety and cleanliness ambassadors have remained um, working uh, on a day-to-day -day basis in downtown, and we hope that as you've had the uh, chance to experience downtown Cleveland, you've noted their presence and you've noted their, commit, uh, their continued commitment uh, to make sure that we're uh, a community that uh, everybody will feel comfortable with. But we uh, thought going forward that it was important to create uh, a series of uh, 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 ritual forms to help us navigate uh, some of the challenges that we, uh, we seek uh, going forward. Our new Downtown Now weekly virtual briefing will deliver resources and updates promote health and wellness, bolster economic uh, resilience, and give insight on the latest information and initiatives mm -hmm. from voices across our downtown community. And we're pleased today that uh, we decided that uh, uh, retail would be our first topic. Uh, and again, we'll have a, a weekly uh, um, uh, topic going forward for the foreseeable future. Um, and with that, I'd like to uh, turn it over to, to uh, today's moderator, um, Michael Deemer. Um, Michael is the Executive Vice President for Business Development for Downtown Cleveland Alliance and heads up our uh, Business Development Center. Um, and that center works day to day uh, along with our neighborhood based partners uh, with many of the retailers uh, uh, that are operating within the downtown community and that you'll hear from today. So with that, I'm going to turn it over to Michael. All right. Well, thank you, Joe. And thanks to all of you for uh, joining us this afternoon. Uh, I, we have a very uh, a terrific panel uh, that I'm looking forward to hearing from. Uh, as Joe said, we're a place-based development organization, uh, and our mission is to, to build a, a vibrant downtown that is the region's most compelling place to live, work, and play. And to us, that means a place where residents and workers and visitors can uh, really walk around downtown and easily meet their daily needs. And obviously our retailers play a vital role uh, in creating that type of uh, vibrant quality place that people want to live, work, and invest in. Uh, I just wanted to say a few words at the outset about some of the things that we have been doing uh, as an organization over the last couple of weeks to support our small business community. Uh, we've been working very closely through our neighborhood partners, uh, primarily the uh, Historic Warehouse District uh, and Historic Gateway neighborhood uh, supporting businesses like those that you'll hear from today through efforts like uh, Shop Saturdays CLE, uh, urging folks to shop online uh, and support small independent businesses uh, while uh, storefronts were closed and we were all unable to go to shops. We've been providing technical assistance uh, on navigating programs uh, like the county's Small Business Stabilization Fund and the city's Emergency Working Capital Loan Program. Uh, and most importantly, we've just been trying to keep in close touch uh, with businesses as they face these challenging times and are having to uh, adapt to a very changed environment. Uh, and obviously the events of the last few weeks have created challenges for place-based development that few of us could have imagined uh, even a couple of months ago. We're gonna talk today about how retailers are managing and adapting their businesses to meet this challenging and, and rapidly 
environment. And to do so, we're joined by some of downtown Cleveland's most successful retail pioneers, all of whom really contribute greatly toward making downtown the unique special place uh, that it is. Uh, our panelists today are Gordon Geiger, the co-owner of Geiger's. Uh, Geiger's is a family business that's been growing in the Cleveland area since 1932. Uh, they opened their downtown store in 2015 and offer a range of men and women's shoes and clothing, outdoor gear, and I've heard some of the best candles around. I've also been told that they carry warm boots. Uh, we're also joined by uh, Emily Kovach, uh, co-owner and operator of Intro Boutique. Uh, Intro opened in 2016 uh, when two sisters recognized a need that we hear a lot about at Downtown Cleveland Alliance, uh, the need for well-made women's apparel and accessories in downtown. Uh, they successfully grew their business from an interior tenant of the Fifth Street Arcades to one of the storefront anchors of the Fifth Street Arcades on Prospect Avenue. So we're delighted to have Emily join us as well. And then the panel is rounded out by Mike Kubinski, the CEO and founder of CLE Clothing. Uh, this was founded in 2008 as an online apparel shop. Uh, CLE Clothing opened its doors on East 4th Street in 2012, uh, making Mike the, the downtown veteran of this group. Uh, their designs are recognizable to Clevelanders and visitors alike. Uh, they've quickly become a community staple. So welcome, Mike, Emily, and Gordon. Uh, to jump into the questions, I, I thought I'd begin by looking back a little bit. As I mentioned in the opening, uh, things have changed a lot over the last couple of weeks and created challenges that we couldn't possibly have imagined uh, not that long ago. Uh, and Gordon, I guess I'd, I'd like to begin with you and ask, um, you know, what uh, some of the strategies are that uh, you've used over the last uh, couple of weeks to adapt your business uh, while you've not been able to operate your, your brick and mortar stores. Thanks. Thanks, Mike. Uh, well, yeah, on March 17th, St. Patrick's Day, ironically, uh, was our last uh, in-store, you know, uh, at any of our three stores, we closed up uh, to protect our employees mainly and our customers. Uh, well, we are fortunate that we have pretty robust online uh, presence and could still maintain uh, a nice amount of business through that. In fact, it, it was up, and and so a lot of the a lot of our customers supported us nicely um, while we were closed. Um, and once the governor said we could reopen on, on May 12th, you know, we've been furiously getting our act together and, and uh, doing all the uh, CDC and PPE preps that we have to do. And, uh, and we are excited to, to open on, on Tuesday to see our customers and friends and, and uh, kind of get back to some sort of normal. We, I just want to assure everybody that we will be uh, wearing face masks and doing all the protective stuff to, to make it as comfortable of an experience as, as we possibly can make. Well, a uh, similar question to, to you, Emily. Uh, obviously, as a, a, a boutique uh, retailer that's uh, grown successfully in, in downtown, I, I'm sure the last couple of weeks have been very challenging. As uh, you know, Gordon mentioned, the importance of online strategies to, to Geiger's, is that something that you've been able to fall back on as well? Yes, definitely. Um, we're lucky enough that we've had our online shop running about a year and a half now. Uh, so, I mean, we were obviously not prepared for this, but having the online shop definitely helped a lot. And it's really taught me a lot about the online shop. So I'm ready to take it even further and really utilize that. Uh, Mike, uh, CLE Clothing was, was founded as an, as an online business. I, I wonder if you could tell us a, a little bit about whether you've had occasion to take advantage of any of the, the programs that have uh, been made available over the last uh, couple of weeks at, through the federal government or the uh, city and county. Yeah, uh, so yeah, we've been, um, we had to close all of our stores and <clears throat> just become an online business for the past uh weeks and months um months <clears throat> um but yeah and, and 
due to all that, I had to navigate some, you know, some of that those financial assistance programs. Um, we were able to obtain the PPP uh, through the SBA and uh, apply for some of the uh, city programs. Uh, some of the programs we could not were vague and we couldn't um, we couldn't apply to just because of where we were or like a level of uh, need, I guess. Um, but yes, we were able to get the PPP, which is a little difficult to navigate or decipher sometimes. And um, hopefully we'll be able to you know, use that to open up very soon. Well, I guess uh, in that vein, and maybe we'll, we'll stay with you for a minute, Mike. Uh, as, as Gordon mentioned, uh, the governor had uh, rolled out some guidance uh, a week or so ago uh, allowing uh, retailers to, to begin to open uh, with some guidelines in place. Uh, and I guess the question for you, Mike, are you, are you planning to, to open on the uh, 12th? And what uh, sorts of measures are, are you uh, planning to take to uh, conform to the, the guidance that the, the governor has issued? Yeah, we're, st we're still working out the details on when and where we're going to open. Um, uh, obviously staffing is uh, a concern, but we're taking every safety precaution um, that, you know, per to the CDC and the state and the, you know, the governor's rules, um, all of our employees will be wearing masks. Um, we're, we will have like the sneeze guard plexiglass at um, the cash wraps that we can have them at. Um, and, you know, you know, making sure that we have the social distancing guidelines and flow in our stores, uh, you know, we're all proper and then the customers can feel safe coming in the stores, but also our employees as well, as we're all part of the same community. Um, and this is Cleveland and we, yeah, we want to, everyone, we want everyone to be safe. So hope that answers. Yeah, no, I, I, I know that's, as I've said, it's, it's, uh, I know moving target for, for everybody to, to try to figure out. Uh, and I'd go, I'd go back to uh, uh, Emily and then uh, back to you uh, after Emily Gordon to, and ask the, the same question or, or uh, as you think about um, the May 12th target date or, or are you planning to open uh, at, at that date and uh, what, what sorts of uh, measures or changes uh, to how you operate or are you having to, to implement? Um, so we're taking it day by day to decide if we are going to open on the 12th. Um, as much as I miss it, I want to be as prepared as possible to open up better than we were before this um, and safer. I, you know, we're also in the middle of small renovation. And so, you know, we didn't really know when the end date would be. So we continued them. Uh, we still have those to work out. But um, when we closed and similar to Geiger's, we closed, I think it was St. Patrick's Day. We're not open that day anyway. So day before. Um, but we at that point we were only allowing two people in the shop because we are only 700 square feet um, so even though that's more than social distancing we're very narrow shops so we have to keep people at you know some in the front some in the back um, so we'll continue doing that we will i mean the biggest safety precaution we're going to take is uh, doing appointments so that we have time to clean in between and clean our hangers and just everything you know yep um yeah, we, we're definitely opening on the 12th. You know, initially we weren't sure if we we're going to open all the stores at the same time, but uh, uh, we have the staffing and we have the protections and uh, distance markers in front of our point of sales. And we're even going to start with a, a person at the door um, explaining what our procedures are going to be, kind of the new normal. Uh, as far as distancing and handling merchandise, um, you know, we're, um, I, all three of us, I, I know, are going to try to, uh, or will, steam apparel that has been tried on or returned uh, to, to rid the virus of any potential. So, um, our biggest thing, we just want to try to get back to some regular doing business and, and I it, maybe it's a little easier for us because we we have a, a bit deeper bench you know with with staff um, but we, we, we just want to keep moving forward here and, and not 
Understood. Well, uh, I, I know when we had a chance to talk a little bit yesterday, um, you know, one of the things that came up was some of the, the, the challenges and uh, for uh, locating uh, uh, supplies for uh, personal uh, protection and for, for protecting uh, customers. Uh, you know, have, have you encountered uh, challenges and uh, how are you navigating those? And I guess I'd put the, pose that question to all three of you. It's been a challenge for sure, but uh, it's starting to loosen up a little bit. We were able to get hand sanitizer. That was the one thing that was the hardest thing to come by. Uh, and we've got that. Uh, we'll have stations as you come in the, in the store. We want everybody to, to use it as they enter the store and, and when they leave. Mm -hmm. um, and then we've got all the other face masks. We've been able to get those uh, disposables to give the customers. They don't have one. Uh, we're going to request that. Um, I don't think we're going to mandate it at this point. We hope everybody's just going to think it's a good idea. Yeah. Be burned anyhow. Well, uh, I asked the same question about supplies. Uh, going back to you, Emily, and you know, Gordon brought up the the mask issue, and I know that that's one that's been the subject of some some public discussions. So I'd be interested in hearing as well how you're planning to handle that. Yeah. Um all of us and the employees have our masks and it's the same thing. We hope that people want to wear their masks as well. Um, I hadn't considered getting disposable ones for people that don't have them and would like to wear them. Um, that's, that's a great idea. I'll give you I, some. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> um, so yeah, it's really um, being as safe as we can be and hope that others feel the same. Got it. Mike, how about you? Yeah, um, I mean, some of the supplies have been a little hard to come by, especially sanitizer um, and just de just and disinfectant and things like that. Um, but we, we've got some orders in, hopefully they'll be in. Um, and then, you know, obviously employees will be wearing masks and we're going to encourage our customers to wear masks. Um, just, you know, it, it protects everyone. And again, as I said, we're a community um, and we need to work with each other. Um, be together on this um, uh, and then you know we're also may, we're looking into maybe having those free masks available for customers um, to encourage yeah kind of all on the same page here <laughs> yeah. yeah well and, and I should say for for downtown Cle Cleveland Alliance's part you know we'll, I think we'll, we'll certainly be encouraging uh, folks who are patronizing uh, businesses to uh, you know Wear, wear masks and, and, you know, be respectful of the, the employees as well as uh, the other customers that are going to be coming in and out. Uh, but th that is one of those things. It'll be interesting to see how it, how it plays out over the next, uh, over the next few days and weeks. Um, as you, uh, uh, as, as we've been talking about, uh, things are changing rapidly uh, by the day. Uh, I, I'm curious about as you, as you think about, beginning to open up and welcome customers back into your storefronts, what sorts of uh, uh, pitfalls or uh, uh, obstacles uh, that you're, you're anticipating that you uh, might need to think through? We'll start, with, uh, start with you, Mike. Um, I mean, for a lot of our, I mean, especially the downtown location, um, it's just like the, the standard hours that we will we, we'll need to navigate and like how did how did this change people's behaviors um like we don't know like obviously with no sporting events um no music events or any events at you know the arena downtown um offices unknown when they're coming back um there'll be downtown residents we found out that restaurants mm -hmm. can open up on the 15th outside and then the 21st for indoor dining so that we actually have some sort of dates there um, but at the same time we don't know what days to be open how many days and how late to be you know what hours um, I think as I said this changed a lot of people's behavior so like being open till 9 p.m. probably is not going to happen for quite some time people have been accustomed to being home um, and you know 
And I think, you know, 6, 7 p.m. might be the new norm for a little bit here until we figure out and test that, test out the whole landscape. I think that's that, you know, that's basically what we're thinking. There are some other aspects, <laughs> um, but, you know, as far as the late hours, <laughs> but um, activity in downtown, but that's, yeah. I think you would, as you think through uh, the, you know, potential uh, hiccups over the next couple of days and weeks, but what sorts of things are you thinking about? You cut out. I'm sorry. Who was that to? Uh, it was to you, Emily. Uh, just, oh, okay. <laughs> Perfect. Forward thinking, you know, there are probably going to be all kinds of things that we're, we're not anticipating, but what, what, what sorts of things are, are you anticipating needing to, to think through and navigate over the next couple of days and weeks? Um, so, I mean, obviously keeping people safe and the things Mike has just said are huge things. Um, my sister and I were talking this morning and, um, oh, shoot, um, one of the, oh, geez, sorry. <laughs> one of the uh, biggest challenges I think we're going to face is that not all of our inventory is now sellable. We are getting into our busy season. June and July are amazing for us. Um, but how are we going to continue to buy seasonal items, um, summer things? And if we do buy them, are our guests going to show up? Um, and that's not to downplay any of the support we've had. It's, it's been absolutely amazing. But Cleveland was on such a high with conventions coming in. And even our sports teams weren't doing that well. But I mean, Indians fans are just so good to us. Um, so, you know, I'm sick of looking at the inventory in here. And I know that our guests probably will be too, but I, I do hope that, um, you know, everyone will kind of understand that and realize a lot of retailers are going to go through this. So, that's that, that is, our biggest challenge. <clears throat> yeah, that, that's the million dollar question, Michael, that uh, uh, all of us are, are faced with is the balance of inventory that we need. Uh, I think we're all sadly predicting uh, a few fewer sales just because there's going to be fewer potential customers, you know, mm -hmm. like everybody else said, I know baseball games, uh, uh, business uh, offices will be a little bit light. Um, so, Managing that's our number one priority, um, and, and having the right stuff at the right time. That's, that's you know, just like Emily said, you know, having uh, spring summer things that are appropriate for when it finally gets warm, mm -hmm. and uh, people want to want to get some new stuff. But having fresh stuff, especially in the fashion business, it's easy. So. Um, that, that's going to be the biggest challenge. Uh, our hours, we're going to start off a little bit leaner. We're, we're noon to six every day uh, on Saturdays, 10 to five. We're, we're not going to be open Sundays or Mondays at this point. Uh, again, monitoring. Uh, we wanted to start off a little bit less, and we're, we're gladly going to add hours and, and days, you know, get into the demand. Um, as a flow. So. Um, well, we had a couple examples just as we were talking here of, of how, uh, you know, sharing information and, and resources among uh, downtown small businesses can, can be helpful. Uh, and I know, Gordon, you've been, <coughs> you've been really instrumental in leading an effort to try to better network uh, Cleveland uh, independent retailers uh, with each other and uh, wanted to give you a little bit of an opportunity to talk about that a little bit. Well, thanks, uh, Mike. Uh, uh, prior to this whole mess we're in the middle of, uh, I spearheaded a group of independent brick and mortar specialty retailers uh, to uh, band together and, and create kind of a consortium of consciousness that uh, uh, reminds people that independent retailers, brick and mortar retailers are, you know, the fabric of every community. And, and you know, we're in Chagrin Falls, Lakewood and downtown Cleveland. Those are all independent communities. Uh, we get great support uh, there in, in all three of those. Um, 
but we, we want to remind our uh, customers that you, you, you can't take independence for granted. Uh, just like Neiman Marcus today, they're filed chapter 11. You know, who, who would have thought that they would ever uh, see struggles? So you, you can't take guys like us and Cleveland CLE and Intro Boutique for granted. They, they need to be uh, supported. Uh, so this this group is is still developing. We have a, a great Facebook page. It's called Cleveland Shops. Um, it, it's modeled after the Cleveland Independent Restaurant Group that's been around for 15 years, successfully marketing uh, the independent restaurant uh, side of things. So we're excited to do it. And again, we already have a nucleus of, of a couple dozen strong uh, retailers that. Uh, we once we really launch it um, after we pass this whole little problem, um, hopefully in June, July, we'll be able to uh, beat that drum a little bit louder and uh, again remind people how important it is for independent retailers to to survive. You know. Well, before we uh, turn it over to uh, our audience for some questions. Uh, I'd like to circle back uh, to you, Mike, and 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 begin with you, uh, but ask a, a, a combined closing question of, of each of you. Uh, you know, we've been trying to do our part uh, as an organization, and again with with our, our neighborhood partners uh, to be supportive of uh, downtown small businesses like yours through all of this. Uh, but I'd, I'd ask you to, to close with a few words. Um, uh, about your business that you'd like uh, our audience to hear, uh, because we want everybody who's watching and uh, listening in to uh, patronize all of your businesses and, and support you. Um, but you know, say, say a few words to the audience about your your business, uh, but also to us at, at uh, the Alliance and in our neighborhood partners. Uh, what sorts of things can we be doing uh, to help you uh, navigate uh, the next couple of weeks and months? And again, Mike, I'd. I'd kick it over you to, to begin this round. Um, well, we're, we are, uh, it's, we're, you know, CLE clothing or Cleveland clothing. We're both, um, <clears throat> um, you know, our tagline is spreading Cleveland pride, uh, one t-shirt at a time. So that's really, you know, what we've been doing since 2008. We know, we all know that Cleveland's a very proud town. Um, it's, you know, we're, I always say, I mean, we're a big city, but we're still a small town and a great community. And, you know, it's, it's the people that live in uh, the greater Cleveland area are different from, you know, other areas, you know, um, we're friendly. We, you know, as one of our shirts said in one of the slides where, you know, we work hard with a blue collar that work at hardworking work at worth ethic, excuse me. Um, and then we're also nice and genuine people. Like we work hard, be nice. That's the Cleveland way. Um, and, you know, we just hope that, you know, I mean, We've seen the support over the past month on our online store. Like we've had great, you know, great sales, great numbers, and people are still shopping with us. Um, and we love that support. Um, and we, you know, we hope that we still get that support when we open up here as soon as we can. Um, you know, but you know, obviously safety is first. Um, but you know, we, you know, support of the community. I think. You know, I believe it's there and it'll somehow be there. And as we come out of this, uh, and, you know, we get more confident and everything and we're all safe. Um, you know, I think Cleveland's going to rally around its small businesses, its restaurants. Um, you know, we opened up in 2011, 2012 um, downtown on East 4th Street when, you know, LeBron wasn't here. We weren't really good at sports then, but people were rally around, rallying around the renaissance that was happening. And it was totally different, you know, it was, it was really awesome the way with the community it was just embracing what was going on in Cleveland. Um, and it didn't take one guy to do it. It took a community. And I think we're going to have to do that again. So well, cool. <laughs> that's a good rallying cry. Yeah. Sorry. I got emotional at the end too. <clears throat> An emotional time. Yeah. Uh, Emily, uh, same question to you. Well, I think to answer like how you can help us, this is amazing talking to retailers and to other people just like, oh, geez, <laughs> just getting our passion out there is so important. Um, it's coming through. 
I'm not emotional because this is a struggle. I think I'm emotional because I miss Cleveland. I miss Clevelanders and I miss doing what I love every single day, seven days a week. Um, like Mike said, like, we'll come back, we'll be fine. So, so thank you for doing this and for all the help. Um, Tom, who's on this call is super helpful too. I mean, he's emailing us every day with things that will help us and you guys are posting great, you know, great advice. So yeah, the support's been amazing. Well, it's, you know, we're, we're, I think we're all here and doing this because we're, we, we share all of your passion for, uh, for the city and for downtown and you, you make our downtown what it is. So we're, we're as appreciative of, of, of you. Well, thank you. Um, and uh, Gordon, yeah, so uh, swing back to you to, to, to close it out before we turn to the Q&A. Well, I don't have a fresh box of Kleenex, so I, I got to compose myself here a little bit. Um, Geigers has been in the business 88 years. Uh, we're, we're shooting for 89 or maybe 90 uh, at least. So we're now fourth gener four generations deep. Uh, my niece, Christy, uh, manages the, the downtown store, as a lot of you know. Um, I, I know she's trying to get back to see her friends and customers. And, and she's a, a downtown, uh, lives downtown at the Bingham. So uh, we will bounce back. Uh, all of us will. It's going to take a team effort. And... Um, we're, we're, we're going to be fine. We, we just have to try to deal with the new normal, whatever that is. And uh, um, I, I think we will we'll get through it. But uh, it's going to take some work. And, and the support that uh, we all get from residences, especially, are going to be, I'm sure, fantastic. Um, well, I, I think. Um... You know what? Obviously, that your 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 commitment not just to your businesses, but to to the city and to the downtown is is really uh, shining through. And uh, want all of you to know that uh, that that we share that uh, one hundred percent. And we know this has been a struggle. We know it's going to continue to be a struggle. Uh, but uh, we're in it with you. And I think, as you've all said in different ways. Uh, if nothing else, Cleveland is a resilient city. We're uh, a city full of grit before people talking about grit became a thing. Uh, and uh, I, I do think that we'll, we'll push through this and come out uh, stronger and, and better on the other side. And I think that's our commitment to you guys, uh, as, uh, as your downtown Cleveland Alliance so, uh, to make that happen. I know that we have lots of people listening in. Uh, I know that some questions are, are queuing up uh, Audrey uh, Gerlach, who introduced the session, is going to uh, field those questions and begin to toss them. Uh, so, Audrey, I'm going to turn it over to you and our audience. All right. Thank you, Michael. And thank you, everyone, for the questions. You're welcome to keep them coming. Um, our first question, of course, Emily, Mike, and Gordon. Um, what are your concerns about downtown's small retail population specifically surviving through this and the reopening? What has become vital for a retail shop in downtown Cleveland to survive through the economic turbulence this has caused? Uh, there's, I'm sorry. There's a lot in that question. Go ahead, go ahead, Emily. <laughs> um, there's so little of us already that it does worry me that we could, you know, I, I pray that it doesn't happen, but I want it. I want to see more retail come down rather than it leave. I would love for this to be a destination for people to come shop. Um, that's really not what it is now. So the fear of losing what we have now is, I hope I answered that right. I'm going to bring it up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there were a few facets <laughs> okay. <to> questions. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, I, I would just add to that, that uh, uh, and em Emily put it the best, that there are so few of us when when she opened her shop, when we decided to, to open in 2015, uh, and, and Mike was a really early adopter, uh, you know, it, it was a, the, the hope that it would 
we wouldn't just be the last three people opening up, that there'd be another three and another three and another three uh, to make uh, to make shopping more fun. And, and it still needs to continue. So um, I, I think we're all confident, but we need some help in that regard. And uh, we got to get the office people back in and back on the field and all that to help us out. Go ahead, Mike. Yeah, I mean, I think um, I, I think it's just really the support of, I mean, as like right now, it's going to be like the residents. And once the restaurants open, we'll see how that how that goes, um, you know, you know, people from the suburbs start coming downtown to go out to eat and support these local um, restaurants and local businesses, um, you know, that we've seen the support over the years. Um, it's, you know, there's a lot of unknowns and sometimes it's scary, but you have to have that faith um, to keep you going every day. Um, so, I mean, it's kind of a, we'll, we'll see what we're going to do and, um, you know, I'm, I have faith. It's just going to be different, I guess. The new normal for the, for the time being. One thing before we turn to the next question, I think is is uh, is worth mentioning uh, is, is you know one of the the things that we've been working on and are continuing to work on uh, at, at DCA is uh, continuing to grow the residential population. Uh, you know, it's been touched on a couple of times, uh, but you know we have uh, just under nineteen thousand residents. Uh, this year, uh, we, we believe we're still on track uh, to hit 20,000 residents by the end of the year. Uh, we have a lot of uh, apartments that are going to be uh, being completed uh, over the summer and moving new residents in. And, you know, we, we really believe that one of the things that we can do to help all of you uh, more than anything else is to help those new uh, apartment buildings be successful, fill them up with residents. Uh, you know, that's just growing the, the built-in customer base uh, for our, our downtown retailers. Uh, and that's something that is an ongoing project for us. Great, thank you. Um, we've gotten a few questions about your online presence. Um, so I'll, I'll kind of just put them together. Are there any new strategies you've had to adopt, such as a stronger online presence that you found particularly successful? Are there others that did, did not work as well? And if you could just talk a little bit about if you've been relying on social media and what role that has played, that would be great. Mike, you're the, you're the veteran of online businesses, so why, why don't we begin with you? Yeah, so I mean, <clears throat> obviously moving to hundred percent online. <clears throat> um, it's just like the old days. Um, and you know, we're, we built our company on, you know, be an online, uh, store and also using social media. We started when MySpace was cool. So we've transitioned <laughs> from MySpace to Facebook to Twitter, um, and Instagram. Um, and that's pretty much all we use. Um, so, um, the, I mean, the only real difference is that we've been a little bit more aggressive with email marketing um, and, and without the fear of being annoying, I guess. Uh, usually, you know, we send out emails maybe once a week or twice a month. And sometimes during this whole time, it's been once a day. And we haven't really seen a decline in that. And we saw, you know, a huge increase in support. Um, and you know, we're, we're seeing a lot of new customers um, you know, we get a report every day about how many new people visited our site um, and purchased stuff versus returning customers. And there's, the new customers always outweighs the returning customers, um, at least for, you know, it depends. We do have return, returning customers. So I don't want to say that we're, we're losing people, but, um, but it's cool that we're people, we're reaching a newer, a new audience um, during this whole time, even though without a store, it's just an online because um, this forced everyone to go online. Um, so I think I answered everything there. Was that, did I miss anything? I, no, I think you got it. I think okay. you got it. <laughs> uh, and, and Emily, I know we, we talked a little bit about online at the outset, but if you, if you could elaborate a little bit on uh, some of the things that have worked, what hasn't worked in, in your social media strategies, that'd be great. Um, well, I needed to hear what Mike said because honestly, I'm still really bad at that stuff. I normally have my employees to say, hey, send an email about this, hey, make a post. Um, 
and I've had to, I mean, they're texting me and telling me to do those things too. Um, I definitely need to improve on those things, but we are trying new avenues, uh, doing a Facebook live on Saturday at 10 AM with a local stylist named Jen Corey. And, uh, I'm really excited for that because I've never done anything similar to that, but that's something I want to continue because I do think that this has been a good push for our online um, and we've reached a lot of people we may not have reached before. So it's really important to keep that momentum going and I'm going to try my best. And Gordon, I know uh, you've uh, spoken in the, the press recently about the how helpful the, the online uh, business has been. Can you, uh, you elaborate again a little bit on some things that you've done that have worked and I think maybe equally helpful to any other retailers that may be listening uh, or some things you've tried that haven't worked? Well, there's lots of stuff that doesn't work, but <laughs> you got to keep keep trying. Um, no, we, we ramped it up uh, being the only avenue uh, that we could sell anything through. We, I, I, obviously, we needed to try to push that a little bit more uh, with, with more emails and to Mike's point, you know, hopefully not to the point of annoyance, but um, uh, it, it's worked. Uh, we, we added some other uh, fulfillment things like, uh, you know, free Cuyahoga County delivery, next day delivery, uh, it'll either be mailed or uh, uh, delivered, literally delivered. And uh, my my son, John, actually, uh, speaking of the younger generation, he, he gets it, all the social media, and uh, has a pulse on it, uh, which is what, what you need. Um, but we're going to continue that next day delivery. We're going to continue, uh, you know, lowering the threshold for, you know, stuff to be free. Um, I, I think this could be part of the new normal uh, that a, a lot of us who are already there uh, are going to have to keep doing. Uh, and we're, we're okay with that. Audrey, ne next question, please. Sure. We've gotten a number of questions regarding the uh, practical steps you'll, you'll take um, when you decide to reopen. I know you're all going about it a little bit differently, uh, but I'll just go ahead and start with that uh, sort of category. Um, will your stores have any so sort of signage that will help ensure physical distance among customers? Yes, definitely. Um, before we had to close our doors, we already had the signs up like, please practice social distancing. We are only allowing two people in. Uh, the shop at a time. It was a little bit lenient then um, because if it was a family, I'd let them in. I'd probably be more vigilant about only two people. So we'll have those signs. Um, they might say, you know, we'd appreciate you wearing a mask, things like that, mm -hmm. or the steps we're taking to ensure their safety too. Mike, is that something you're, you're thinking through as well? Yes, we're, we're going through all the different uh, types of signage and, you know, sign at the door, kind of the cash wrap signs around the store, um, possibly signs on the floor. Um, yeah, but just making sure that we're all, everyone is safe um, and everyone feels safe. Um, yeah, so, you know, working on flow charts on how you can shop in our stores, depending on the size or what store. Um, but yeah, it's all being uh, thought out and put into put into place. And you, Gordon? Uh, of course. In fact, we're going to have a sign right at our doorway, right next to the hand sanitizer as you come in, uh, stating our policy and, and requesting masks and and uh, social distancing. And, and um, hopefully people are, are, are going to be looking but not just browsing and touching everything in the store. So mm -hmm. we'll, we're going to have some um, coaching from from our staff to be mindful of that because everything that's that touched needs to be cleaned um, and disinfected. So mm -hmm. that's, yeah, I, I think everybody kind of gets it. We we will do all of that. Sure. Uh, next question, Audrey. Um, sure, we are 
starting to run a little low on time. Um, moving forward, do you think that the pandemic will fundamentally change the way you look at and manage your business? If so, in what ways? I think it goes back to we're Clevelanders and we're hard workers. So uh, not sure how much will change, but I definitely think um, I'll cut back on working and eating dinner at 8 p.m., uh, things like that coming in seven days a week. Um, it'll, it'll be nice to slow down. It's unfortunate, but I mean, it, it'll be a welcome change. I think even as people, we're all gonna change. So definitely. On, on the heels of that, being a guy that's been doing it for 40 years, I finally discovered that there is really a Saturday and a Sunday. <laughs> um, <laughs> You know, the old adage was, you know, thank goodness it's Friday, only two more work days till Monday. And, and that's, uh, there's a lot of truth to that when you're a, a, a retailer uh, and you're open that many hours. So, um, you know, I, what we have seen though is how important our website is and going forward, uh, it needs to have a full complement of everything that we sell. And we sell lots of different stuff uh, because people now shop that way. The first thing they do is they pick up their phone and uh, you know, near a store that sells Sorel boots, you know, near me. And, and, and you can get that information in a split second. So uh, we need to be sharp on that and, uh, and, and pay a lot of attention to that going forward. Mm -hmm. Mike, do you, do you want to close it out? Um, yeah, I mean, I think it's going to, we're going to look at, you know, obviously online is going to be big and uh, adapting our brick and mortar stores to that online um, and figuring out ways how we do that and how we really connect it. Um, you know, as of right now, probably many of our customers know that the online and brick and mortars don't really communicate sometimes. <laughs> and we do our best to bridge that gap. Um, that's just kind of, you know, it'll, it'll probably force us to migrate our POS system. So they all talk to each other. Um, but, um, yeah, so you could, you can browse online and say, I'm going to go pick it up at this store. Um, and then, you know, it's just becoming more efficient. Um, obviously we're probably going to see sales go down for the time being. And so how do we stay efficient? Um, and you know, with, you know, just, you know, just, to be a business, you know, and, and have storefronts and make a vibrant city, you know, keep this uh, renaissance and this, uh, you know, Cleveland, downtown Cleveland going um, in the positive direction that it was going or is going, sorry, <laughs> wrong word, is going. <laughs> Let's keep that glass half full. Yes. Uh, well, uh, we're, we're, we're coming up on our hour, uh, and you've all been very generous uh, with your time. I, I, I want to thank our, our audience uh, for joining in and listening in and staying with us uh, and for all of the, the really great questions and engagement from you. Uh, uh, Gordon, Emily, Mike, I, I really want to thank all of you, not just for uh, being a part of this today, but for uh, all that you've done and continue to do for downtown Cleveland. Uh, as I said at the outset, we're a place-based development organization. Uh, everything that we do to try to attract people, jobs, and investment uh, into downtown begins with building a quality place, uh, and you're really at the forefront of doing that. So uh, thanks to each of you. Uh, I would urge uh, everybody listening in uh, to support uh, our, our guests, uh, businesses, Geiger's, Intro Boutique, and CLE Clothing. Uh, as well as all of our shops uh, in, in downtown Cleveland. Uh, they need you now more than ever. Uh, you can find out more about uh, the uh, shops that are available in, in downtown and all of the retail by uh, following us uh, on, on Twitter, uh, Instagram, and LinkedIn. Uh, we're very uh, vocal uh, about supporting our, our downtown businesses. And as Joe said at the outset, this uh, webinar was the first uh, in what will be a, a weekly series uh, updating uh, the downtown community on uh, different aspects of uh, this rapidly uh, changing and very challenging environment that we find ourselves in. Uh, but again, I, I thank all of you for your time today. 
uh, and thank you for your support of downtown Cleveland. Welcome. Yes, thank you. Thank you. Thank you everybody. for the opportunity. Yep.